Quickly grab your calculator and do this. Divide 9876543321 by 12345678. The result will surprise you. It's 8 followed by 7 zeros and then some non-zero digits. This number will look peculiar if we include more digits in the answer. What's going on here? Maybe it's a calculator glitch and the result is equal to 8. But no, this can't happen because to get 8 the numerator must be even and obviously it's not. Let's uncover this mystery and figure out why it's so close to 8 but not 8 exactly. First, let us divide numerator and denominator by an appropriate power of 10 to bring it to this form. The numerator here is close to 1, so let us write it as 1 minus something. It's easy to see that in the numerator we are subtracting precisely one-tenth of the denominator. To simplify notations, let us denote the constant in the denominator by c. Then what we have here is the following expression. So it's 1 minus c divided by 10 over c. And what we would like to show is that this is approximately is equal to 8. Let us work with this expression. If we multiply both sides by c, then we get that 1 minus c over 10 should be approximately equal to 8c. So this is what we want to show. Or if we move this to the other side, then uh, we will get that 1 is approximately equal to 8c plus uh, c over 10. If we bring this to a common denominator, we will get 81 c over 10 is approximately equal to 1 or so this means that we need to show that c is approximately equal to 10 over 81. If the value of c were exactly 10 over 81 then here we would get exactly 8 but obviously this fraction is not 8 but close to it. So we expect that the value of c is very close to this fraction. So if c is not 10 over 81, what is? Let us write this number in the following way. It's 1 times 1 tenth plus 2 times uh, 100 plus 3 times 10 to the negative 3. How can we make this number more perfect and complete? Well, I have an idea. Let's uh, call the new number d and let it be 1 times 10 to the negative 1 plus 2 times 10 to the negative 2 plus 3 times 10 to the negative 3 and then instead of stopping at uh, 9 let us go all the way to infinity. So number d is a sum of infinitely many summons that are getting smaller smaller and smaller. Calculus tells us that such infinite sums may converge to a finite answer. We point out that numbers c and d are very close to each other because the difference is composed of very small terms. So the question that we have is, is d equal to 10 over 81 exactly? Well, I don't know. Uh, how do we compute such an infinite sum? One useful trick in mathematics is that problems may become simpler if we make them more general. Let us set a to be 10 to the negative 1 or 1 tenth. So the expression that we will need to compute will be a plus 2a squared plus 3a cubed plus 4a to the power of 4 plus 5a to the power of 5 and all the way to infinity. So let us call this s of a and uh, the number d here is uh, simply equal to s evaluated at a equals 1 tenth. How to evaluate this infinite sum? Well, I still don't know. Another principle in mathematics is uh, when you have a hard problem that you don't know how to solve, try to solve something easier which is similar to what you have. Let us write down another infinite sum which I'll call r of a. So I'll take 1 plus a plus a squared plus a cubed plus a to the power of 4 and all the way to infinity. For the sum to give a finite answer, the value of a should be small and a should have absolute value less than 1. Let us play with this expression. If we multiply both sides by a, then we will get that uh, a 
plus a squared plus a cubed plus a to the power 4 and so on. But the right hand side is uh, exactly r of a minus 1. Because when we multiplied r of a by a, the constant term simply disappeared. Now let us apply some algebra. Let's move uh, minus 1 to the other side. And then we'll get what that, that 1 is equal to r of a minus a times r of a. Or this is equivalent to saying that 1 is equal to 1 minus a times r of a. This tells us that the infinite sum r of a is equal to 1 over 1 minus a. Well, this is great, but this is not what we need, because we need to compute s and not r. So, but perhaps the same trick will work. So let's compute what is a times s of a. This will be a squared plus 2a cubed plus 3a to the power of 4 plus 4a to the power of 5 and so on. We need to somehow relate this expression to s of a. Well, there is a way. So what if we add r to both sides? Then we will get 1 plus a, then a squared plus a squared will give us 2a squared. The terms with a cubed will give us 3a cubed, then 4a to the power of 4, and so on. But this is s of a plus 1. Now let's rearrange this with algebra. We'll get r of a minus 1 is equal to s of a minus a times s of a. Now for the left hand side, we substitute the value of r of a and we will write 1 as 1 minus a over 1 minus a. And in the right hand side, we can factor it's 1 minus a times s of a. In the left hand side, these two ones will cancel and a comes with a double minus. So this is uh, simplifies to a over 1 minus a. Finally, dividing both sides by 1 minus a, we get the value of s of a. s of a is equal to a over 1 minus a squared. And voila, we can get the value of d by taking a to be 1 tenth. So d is 1 tenth over 1 minus 1 tenth squared. So this is one tenth over nine over ten squared. So this is one tenth over eighty one over one hundred. And now multiplying numerator and denominator by one hundred, we get ten over eighty one. And that's exactly what we expected to get. This tells us that. Uh, 1 minus d over 10 over d has value exactly 8. And since c is extremely close to d, then this value is not 8, but very close to it. Mystery solved.